Hallelujah. Father, we honor you this day. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for keeping us this week. Thank you for bringing us to the house of worship, giving us a heart and mind to be into worship. We give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we intercede for one another. We call out our brother, our sister's name, knowing that you know the details of their circumstance. Father, in the name of the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, we pray for each other. Bring a breakthrough, bring a miracle, bring healing, bring deliverance, whatever they stand in the need of, grant it in the name of the Lord. We pray not only for the persons whose hands we are holding, but we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who join us on the internet and other means, God, we pray that you would speak to them. Anoint our time in your word, Lord, let your word be alive and fresh and real. Allow it, oh God, to speak to your people. Let lives be changed. Save somebody who's unsaved. Reclaim a person who's drifted out of fellowship with you. Somebody who's unsure about where they want to direct their faith. We pray, Father, that you would just ignite their faith to be directed towards you. Now, Father, we surrender this time to you and ask for your anointing, your power, and your might. That the name of Jesus would get the glory, the credit. We thank you ahead of time. We believe even before we finish asking that you've already dispatched angels to bring it to pass. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give your neighbor a hug. All right, while you're standing, open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Mm, amen. You can be seated. I want to I want to use as a subject today the other side of being dissed. Look at your neighbor say, there's another side of being dissed. Look at the person on the other side saying, in case you haven't heard, there's a other side to it. One of the things about the Old Testament that is significant, that helps us put our confidence in Jesus, is that the Old Testament spends many chapters and verses and books giving us a description of the coming Messiah. As a matter of fact, the Jews had anticipated this Messiah and how they would know that the Messiah was coming is that much of the New Testament would give a letter, give us information and descriptions about what he would look like and how they would be able to identify his coming. It is unfortunate that when he finally did show up, he was not identified. One of the things that the scripture tells us about his coming that is rather significant that would be a indicator that he was who he said he would, he, who the Messiah would be, is that he would be, according to Isaiah's description here in chapter 53 of Isaiah, is that he, he would be despised and rejected by men. And so when Jesus came and he was despised and rejected by his own even, uh, it, it is an indication that he was, the, he was the Messiah that they had been awaiting. I wanted to talk about this today because there is some insight into this rejection of Jesus that has application into our lives. And I thought I, I, thought I would talk to you about it. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to give you my punchline to this message early. don't like to do this with this crowd. But I'm telling you right off the bat, I'm going to tell you right now up front where my climax is going to be. 
they teach you when you preach sermons, you hold off that climatic, that climatic point, that point of celebration, that point that's significant and important. You hold it off to the end. You hold it off as long as you can. Then you drop it all, you drop it on the people, then you drop the mic and walk off the stage. <laughs> but I'm gonna give you my mic dropping point up front. Y'all supposed to say, come on, Pastor, give it to us. <laughs> what I want to talk about today is a significant message that this passage has implication to you and our life. And here it is. The significant point that this passage is talking about is a Savior who was rejected. And the application to you and I, to our lives, is when a person is rejected in life, it is an indication that God has something special for their life. Oh, I thought I would get a little few more amens. I thought, I thought there might be somebody up in the camp who's been living, being talked about and rejected and pushed to the curb and unrecognized and unappreciated. I thought there would be a few more people that would recognize that issue and would go ahead and celebrate because I gave you my punchline early. Now, if y'all don't act right by me giving it to you up front, I might have to hold it back for the 12 and the 6.30 and wait till the end. But I wanted to give it to you up front because it's a significant point. It is a very, very significant point that, that I wish I had known this growing up. As I was growing up as a young man uh, in school and, and in my life, as I go back and look back over my life having moments and periods and seasons of rejection, some often leading me to be depressed, often feeling suicidal and lonely and sad. I look back over my life now and I, I wish I knew then what I knew, know now. I wish I knew then when they didn't invite me to their parties. I wish I knew then when they didn't come to my parties. I wish I knew then when church after church after church after church didn't want me to be their pastor. I wish I knew then out of all of the women who didn't want me, who did, was uninterested in me, all of the girls who never called me, wouldn't give me their number. I wish I knew then what I know now that when you don't fit in, when they don't like you, when they don't respond to you, when you're on the outside of the curve, when they don't appoint you, pick you, vote for you, celebrate you, when you're not in it, I wish I knew then what I know now, that God does not want you to fit in. He doesn't want you to fit in because if you fit in, when you get to the place where God is taking you, Somebody will try to take credit for you getting where you are going. But God doesn't want to share his glory with anybody. He doesn't want nobody else to try to take credit. When you get to the place where God is going to take you, can't nobody get credit but Jesus himself. I wish I had a praying crowd with me. I wish I had somebody. Somebody holler and say, tell your neighbor, he's preaching better than you're saying amen. This is a biblical truth. Rejection is a sign. It's an indicator that God has something special for you. And this is it's a, it's a truth. It's a biblical truth. It is a, a component of life that more people need to understand. And it is reflected through multiple people throughout the scriptures. It is demonstrated through various lives throughout the Bible. I don't have time in our little few, few little bit of time that I have to highlight all of them, but I want to pick out one today and talk about this one person who had multiple points of rejection in his life. And I thought I should talk about it with you today because this man had these things going on in his life and yet they were indicators that God had plans to make his life special. His name is David. Somebody said, oh yeah, I know David. David is a man who had some issues. He had a lot of issues in his life. He killed Saul's murderer. He committed adultery with Bathsheba. He tried to cover up his sin of adultery when Bathsheba got pregnant by, uh, and, try, and even went forth and killed Bathsheba's husband. This man had some issues 
But the Bible says an interesting thing about David in Acts 13. It says he was a man after God's own heart. Wow, that's amazing to me. Here's a guy who did all of these things, all of these bad behaviors, who did all of these wrong things, but yet in spite of that, God had a selection on his life. God had an anointing on his life. God had set aside something to happen and to do with his life that was amazing. And that somebody look at your neighbor and say, that gives you hope. As nasty as you are, God can use you. As jacked up as you are, there's hope for you. If God can use David, he can use you. I can't get no amens from nobody. David finds himself through various points of his life being rejected being pushed to the curbs, various points of his life being overlooked. I want you to allow me to just walk through some of this. I, I'm going to give you passages. I don't have time to wait for you to, to, to turn it in and read it. You're too slow. Uh, but just write these verses down, and I want to encourage you to read them in your devotions or in your study. Or when you get an opportunity, uh, write the verses down and get an opportunity to, uh, when you can, to study and read it. It, is, it was life-changing for me when I saw what happened in David's life. He had repeated points of rejection repeated points of being dissed this means to be rejected pushed to the curb uh, unrecognized and he was dissed somebody say dissed first of all he got rejected by his family somebody say rejected by his family as a matter of fact on multiple occasions he got rejected by his family let me just point out a couple the first one is mentioned right here in first Samuel chapter 16 Verses 6 through 11. Let me set the stage. Let me paint the picture for you. 1 Samuel 16. God has spoken to the prophet Samuel and given him instructions that the next king of Israel is coming out of Jesse's household. Jesse happens to be David's father. And so Samuel is sent, the prophet Samuel is sent by God to Jesse's house to pour oil and anoint the next king of Israel. And so Jesse, uh, Samuel goes to Jesse's house and when he gets to Jesse's house, he asks Jesse for his sons. So he says to him, one of the, the next king of Israel, one of your boys is going to be the next king of Israel. And so the Bible says that Jesse bought out his seven sons. And he sought to try to pour the oil over the seven sons, but the oil would not come out of the bottle. He went through the first son, the second son, the third son, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seven sons. He went through all seven sons, and the oil will not pour. And Samuel said, none of these are the boys. Do you have another one? He said, yes, I got another one, but you surely don't mean David. David, the shepherd boy, David, the one, the ruddy, jacked up one, he's down in the field. You can't possibly mean him. He got dis, looked over, not considered, passed by, rejected by his own father. Samuel said, bring him here, let me check him out. And when David walked in the room and Samuel lifted up the veil of oil, when he turned it, the oil started pouring. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody need to understand your father don't want to own you. Your father don't want to acknowledge that he's your father. The father is nowhere to be found. But I got some good news. When you get rejected, it's a sign that you are special to God. His father looked past him, didn't consider him. Surely it cannot possibly be David. Then... He's just a lad at the time. In chapter 17, jotted down his family. Chapter 17, 1 Samuel, verses 20 through 28. Jot it down. You don't have time. Too slow. Jesse, David's father, sends David down to the battlefield where his brothers are in the army. Are y'all with me so far? Have I lost y'all? His brothers are in the army. They're in battle with the Philistines. They're at their war. And his father sends David down to take some bread and some, some, a meal to his brothers and to inquire as to how is the battle going. When David gets down to the battlefield and, and to inquire and to bring the food to his brothers, he is shocked by what he sees. What he sees is the army of the living God. 
hiding over in a ditch. The children, the nation of Israel, the armies of God, the children of God, the men, the soldiers are hiding over in the ditch. And out on the battlefield is this one gigantic of a man, the lone soldier of the Philistines by the name of Goliath. Goliath is the champion of the Philistines and they have issued a challenge to the Israeli soldiers and they've said, you send out your champion, we'll send, we'll send out our champion, let the two men fight and the man who wins, that army will be the winning army. David gets down to the battlefield. Here he goes down and sees this scene that the soldiers of the living God are hiding over in the ditch. Out in the middle of the battlefield is Goliath standing waiting for Israel to send the soldier out. This didn't happen one day. This happened day after day after day for weeks. Every day he would go out in the battlefield. I wish y'all knew the Bible. I wouldn't have to explain all this to y'all. He would stand out day after day, week after week, waiting for Israel to send somebody out to do battle. And there they are hiding in a ditch. David said, what's going on down here they said to David well the king has offered for somebody to go out and fight Goliath but nobody's been willing to go as a matter of fact the king has offered to give his daughter's hand in marriage to the man who goes and fights Goliath and defeats him. The king is offered to exempt this man's family from taxes and the king is offered to make the man rich. David said, what did the king offer? When David started showing an interest in being the one who went out to the battle, his brothers dissed him. His brother said, you're just a lad. You're not, you're not strong enough. You're not old enough. You're not a soldier. Sit down. But you know the story. David went on out to the battlefield with his slingshot and killed Goliath. He got rejected by his family. His father rejected him and his brothers rejected him. Somebody better understand right here today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but when your family members push you to the curb, instead of crying and complaining, instead of being upset about it, it's an indication. It's God's way of telling you, you are special. Oh, I wish I could hit a few more amens than that. I'm talking about somebody say your family. Somebody say your family, your family. Let me roll on. I, I don't have as much time as I thought I did. My time got away from me. I got to rush on through. Here's the second uh, situation, the second scenario, the second uh, 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 group that rejected him. He got rejected by his employer. Somebody say his boss rejected him. Right here in 1 Samuel 17, verses 32 through 33, jot it down, 1 Samuel 17, 32 through 33, he gets rejected by the king, his boss. David had a job. David's job was to go and play his harp for the king when the king got, when the king got distressed. He'd go down and play the harp, and the king's troubled spirit would be soothed and calmed. But on this particular day, this we're still right here on the battlefield, and the king is somewhere in the vicinity of this situation, and David inquires and says that he will go out and fight Goliath. This is the same situation of when his brothers rejected him. Not only did his brothers reject him, but he gets rejected right here by his boss. His boss said to him, you're only a child. You can't go out and fight Goliath. And yet he looked him over, didn't consider him. He got rejected. Not one time did he get rejected by his boss. Not only did his boss reject him about going and fighting Goliath, but after David killed Goliath, after he took the, the slingshot and the five stones, went out in the battlefield, killed Goliath, chopped off his head, and they marched into the city celebrating the fact that they had defeated Goliath and the Philistines, and the people and the women lined the streets and celebrated the army coming back in. They sang a song that said, Saul has killed his thousands. Saul has killed his thousands. But then they said, but David has killed 10,000. Are y'all still with me? Come a little closer. I'm trying to plead a case. I'm trying to paint a picture to you as they're marching into the city and the armies are marching in and David is on the shoulders of the soldiers and the people are celebrating and the women are singing his praise. David 
finds himself getting rejected by the king who becomes jealous. He's mad because he didn't think he was old enough to go into battle. He's mad because David didn't wear his armor into the battle. He's mad because now the women are singing his praise. Look at your neighbor and say, I wish you knew the Bible pastor wouldn't have to spend so much time telling the story. And the Bible says, from that point forward, from that moment, when the women sang his praises, Saul sought to kill David. Well, I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but somebody should get this in your heart and mind and understand that when your boss rejects you, it simply means that you have a special assignment from God. When they don't want you in the corner, when they don't want to celebrate you, when they can't recognize the work you've done, when they don't give you a promotion, we get everybody a promotion around you, buddy, you. Ah, it's a sign that God has something special for you. At one point in 1 Samuel chapter 29, jot this down. 1 Samuel chapter 29, please write it down. Oh, oh by the way, did I say that Saul sent soldiers after David. He issued a search warrant for them to find David and kill him. On a couple of occasions, Saul threw his sword, his spear, I'm sorry, at David to try to kill him. Oh yeah, when they try to kill you, try to get you fired, try to embarrass you, it's just a sign. It's just a sign. Y'all not listening. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You're not getting this in your spirit. If you heard what I said, somebody would be running around the building. Somebody would be shouting because I know in this camp, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know you up in here. They've been trying to fire you. They've been trying to hurt you. They've been trying to ruin your name. They've been trying to make you look bad. But God told me to tell you, lift up your head. God says, I got something special for you. Be be not discouraged or dismayed. They're going to try to hurt you, but they can't hurt you. They can't harm you. I got something special for you. Somebody high five somebody, high five your neighbor. Find somebody who agrees with you. Find somebody who can identify with you. I don't know who it is. Don't just don't just clap the hand of your neighbor. Find somebody who look like they're going through it too. And give them a high five and say, Ha, ah, he talking about me. The Lord is speaking to me. He's been rejected by his his boss. Not only did Saul try to kill him, but now Saul has sent a search warrant out and David finds himself on the run. He ends up abandoning his role and responsibilities because they're trying to kill him. He, 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 he leaves his good government job. Because... The king is trying to kill him. And he runs into a cave, and in the cave, unbeknownst to him, are a bunch of reject men. In the cave are some men who are discontent, in debt, and in distress. A bunch of losers. He runs into the cave, and he joins himself to this group of men. As a matter of fact, they choose him as their leader. Are y'all still with me? Have I lost you yet? He finds himself having to find a job. And so he and these men go and join the Philistine army. Y'all missed it. Uh, this is the same army to which he had killed their champion. It's a crazy scenario that now he's enlisted into their army. It's crazy for him to actually join up and work for the Philistine army. It's like, uh, it's like a redskin becoming a Dallas cowboy. It's unheard of. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. You know you're in bad shape. 
when you got to go and join up with the enemy. And now this Philistine army is about to go to battle again with the Israelis. And the Philistine general is inspecting his soldiers and he notices among his soldiers these Jewish boys. And the general decides that, no, we're about to fight y'all kinfolk. Y'all are fired. He has lost his good government job. He and these group of rejects have lost their government. So now he's been rejected by the Philistines. Somebody say, look at your neighbor, say, will you get rejected by your boss? But hold up, it's not just that he got rejected. Not only did he get rejected by his family and not only by his employer, he got rejected by his coworkers. Oh, now y'all waking up. Now y'all saying amen. I've been preaching the whole time and it's 11 o'clock. I'm, oh my gosh, we're going into overtime. Look at your neighbor say it's going to be overtime. The men that he has joined to have now been, have lost their government job. Now they go back to their camp. They go back to their homes. And when they come back to their camps where their family and their children and their tents are located, they discover that their camp has been raided. It's been set on fire and their, their wives and children have been taken captives. And the Bible says that this group of reject men began to cry. And matter of fact, they cried until they had no more tears to weep. You know it's sad when men start crying until they have no more tears to weep. And they are so sad, so bothered, so frustrated by the circumstance that they're in that the Bible says right, right here in 2 Samuel, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 30. Read it then when you get an opportunity, that whole 30th chapter of first Samuel it said the men spoke of stoning David oh that's a sad thing when you are you about to be killed by your co-workers matter of fact he is now being rejected by the rejects you know you in bad case when the rejects don't want you I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody better get this in your heart. When the rejects don't want you, when, when other folk don't want to be around you, that when, when the rejects reject you, it's all God's trying to tell you is the anointing that is on you for the assignment he has for you is super heavy, super special. Now, they, they don't want you, and God don't want you to fit in because he has something special for you. Uh, Pastor, I'm preaching better than y'all are saying amen here today. Let me, let me hurry up. Uh, yes, this is a sad day. It seems sad for David, but I know something now. David didn't know it then, and I'm grateful that I can look back at his life and it can encourage me because I know that when you get rejected by your family, rejected by your father, rejected by your brothers, rejected by your boss, and rejected by your co-workers, it's an indication that God has something special in store. Let me, let me cut this short. Let me get to the chase of the matter. Oh, 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 I got to give you this one last one. This, this is an important one, too. Not only was he rejected by all of those. Here's the fourth thing. He got rejected by, hold up, somebody might not want to say amen too loud on this, but he got rejected by his spouse. I thought somebody might want to say amen here today. You've been rejected by your, your husband, rejected by your wife. He got rejected by his wife. Let me, can, I, can I paint the story about what happened with him? David, David has now become king. He's now the king, and he now has the assignment of bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. He's 
going to get the Ark of the Covenant. It, it contains the artifacts. It contains the sacred artifacts for the nation of Israel, for the people of God. It's in this Ark of the Covenant, and it is in another place. It should not be. It belongs in Jerusalem. He goes to get it, and on his way to bring it back, they discover that, that they are carrying it the wrong way. Actually, they didn't even know they were carrying it the wrong way, but as soon as they started carrying it, uh, the, 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 one of the soldiers, one of the servants got struck dead by God because he touched the Ark of the Covenant and they were afraid to carry it any further because somebody else might die. Are y'all with me? Have I lost you yet? So they left it there. They left it where it was. They left it in the home of a man in the city where it was. And David went back home to figure out what went wrong. He discovered they were carrying it improperly. And so they go back to get it together and to carry it. And so now he's got it right and they're carrying it. I feel a shout coming on when I talk about this point right here. So now they're carrying the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant back home. Matter of fact, this is a little extra. I throw this in one I won't charge anything extra for this. They carry it six paces. And they stop and shout. Because nobody died after six paces. Sometimes you got to learn to shout. Even though you haven't got to where you're going, you're just grateful that you've gone a little way and nothing bad happening. Just you've gone a little way. Somebody say, learn to shout, learn to shout now, and you don't have to wait till the battle is over. They took it six paces. They stopped, they shouted, they celebrated, they picked it back up, they took it back home. When they got to Jerusalem, and they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, David is so happy that he is shouting and dancing until he dances out of his clothes. I wonder if anybody here ever danced until they dance till your jacket came off, till your shoes, you had to come out of your shoes. He's dancing and celebrating that they've brought it back home. Y'all excuse me, I feel shouting at me. From the window of the king's palace is his wife watching. When David finally comes home, she says to him, the king sure made a fool out of himself today. Anybody here know what it's like to want to look for encouragement from a place that you think you should get encouragement, but then you don't get the encouragement? I know you want to clap, but you afraid. Go ahead. Wink, wink at me on the side that's the opposite of where he or she is sinking. Just wink at me and they won't know that. Yeah, 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 I see you. All right, I got you. But I like David's response. And you and I got to learn how to respond when somebody who you are expecting to encourage you and celebrate you, when they don't give it to you, you got to learn to do what David did. David said, if you didn't like the way I was dancing today, wait till you see me dance the next time. Hey! Somebody said, you thought I was... You thought I was dancing bad this time? You wait till I get my dance in the next time. It's going to be an undignified praise. It's going to be a praise that will, well, oh, you wait till I dance the next time. Somebody grab two or three people's hand and shake it and say, wait till I dance the next time. Wait till I celebrate the next time. Wait till I give God the glory the next time. I I'm going to give him the praise. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but you've been rejected on every side. You've been talked about. You've been looked over. Nobody considered that you would be a candidate. You thought you would never be able to do anything because they rejected you. I got a sign. I got a message for you. There is another side of being dissed. When you get dissed by men, it means God is about to discover you. Hey! Somebody, shake somebody's hand and say, I'm about to be discovered. I'm about to be discovered. God, God, 
is about to expose me. God is about to reveal me. Hey! Hey! When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God he saved me. I'm trying to stop, but I can't quit. This thing is getting good down in my soul. Ah, oh, there's an other side of being this. There's another side of it. There's a new revelation. You might be disliked. You might be dismissed. You might be dismayed, disappointed, discarded, disavowed, disinherited, discounted, disapproved disadvantage discharge but it's okay God is about to put you on display Woo! hey he's about to unveil to you he kept you covered he kept you hidden they didn't see you they didn't like you they didn't choose you they didn't want you but god kept you covered until he displayed you Jesus bless your name thank you God they didn't come to my party they didn't invite me to their party all those churches passed over me but I look at me now Jesus, I'll take your diss any day. I'll take being rejected by man any day. It means God's got my back. He's got me covered. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I don't know who you are, 
I just know you're here. They talked about you. They've rejected you. They didn't want you around. They didn't want you on the team. They didn't give you the promotion that you've so You've earned it, but they wouldn't give it to you. It's God's way of telling you, I got you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus, I thank you. I give you the praise. I didn't know it then, Lord, but I know it now. I'll never retaliate, Lord, because I know you got my back. I know what it means now, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Somebody needs Jesus. Come here right quick. Come here. You need forgiveness of sins? Come quickly. You need the Lord Jesus. You need to rededicate. Come right now. You need to rededicate. Come right now. You're not sure. You need assurance. Come. You already saved. You need a church home. Come on right now. This is a good church home. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 